there. Today we're going to be talking about this pen. This pen was sent to me. I'm just checking my mic. Where is it? Yes, that is. Okay. Hello. Can you hear me? Okay. This pen was sent to me by uh, uh, Carlo of Enso. Uh, it is an Enso pen, and Enso has made pens in metal uh, for a very long time. That is, they have made pens out of metal, so not in a in a city called metal. Um, this is the first pen they have made in ebonite, Japanese ebonite to be precise. Being ebonite, super light. When I'm like, if you, I'm sure if you put this very gently on my hand, I would not even notice I was holding a pen. Pen, a pen, it is that light. All black stealth pen. A lot of people love stealth pens, love all black pens, so I think this is going to be popular. I'm going to cover the parts of the pen. I'll do a writing sample. I'll tell you what I like about it, what I don't like about it. Pizzazz! Let's get started. Okay, here we go with the Enso in Japanese Ebonite. Comes in a nice box with a cardboard outer sleeve and then a magnetic closure that opens up like this. Inside we have the pen and a converter, which you see has some water in it because I did use it. But then I put in the cartridge that came with the pen. This is a very simple minimalist design. I will show you this pen. I'll zoom in a little bit. I'll show you this pen next to a Pilot Metropolitan. As you can see, these two pens are of about the same length, but the Enso is a bit girthier. We see a cap and a barrel. There is no clip. There are no markings. This is a very Shinobi-esque pen in my mind. Stealthy, and that's pretty much it. It's very, very light. I can barely uh, feel that I'm holding a pen, and I'm, I'm pretty sure that if you were to sort of very, if I would be wearing gloves and you would very carefully put this on my hand, I would not feel the pen. It is really that light. Okay, so the cap. Ebonite, finial, same material as the cap. It's just from a solid piece. Barrel, same deal, and it tapers down. Uh, the cap unscrews and then we have this section which tapers down, flares out a little bit. Um, ebonite has a very specific feel to it, it's very smooth, and yet there is a bit of texture to it, which makes for a very pleasant pen. The nib is Bach number no. 6 steel, a stainless steel black coated nib with an ABS feed, and as I said, the pen in this case has a cartridge in it. Strictly speaking, you could use this as an eyedropper, make sure to put and copious amount of silicone grease on those threads. There is also this pocket model, which I will review in a separate video, which actually comes with a little O-ring pre-installed for eyedroppering. Okay, what else can I say about this pen? Um, the nibs uh, are available in extra fine through broad, and for $40 you can upgrade to a titanium nib, which would give you more line variation, because those tend to be a bit softer. I will say this is a pretty stiff nib. It's not advertised as a, as a flex nib anyway. You can get the two sizes. From what I understand, I mean, Enso works with Kickstarter. The current uh, sort of cheapest option to get them is for 79 US. And I have the feeling, but I may have read that wrong, that both pens are the same price. Um, for now, I'm talking about this, uh, let's call it the, the, the larger size pen only. Why don't we have a look at how the pen writes? Uh, I can't tell you what ink this is beyond this is the ink that came with the pen. And one thing I did not point out is you could post this, I wouldn't recommend it. Um, for the simple reason that ebonite doesn't bounce, uh, it, it, it could crack, and given that this is really light, I would not want to accidentally push this in too far and then crack it. Um, it also is a little wobbly because of the shape of the barrel, so even when you post it, the cap moves around a bit. So I personally, I would not do this. We have here the Enso Japanese Ebonite. This is a uh, fine nib in stainless steel, and it's, uh, I mean, it's a black ink. Again, it's a cartridge that came with the pen. 
the pen has quite a bit of feedback when you write but I don't find it scratchy now I have found often that with coated nibs like this one you can see that the tipping I don't know if you can see it but the tipping is coated as well at some point that'll wear off a bit and you may see that the tipping is starting to get I don't know how far I can zoom in without this being unable to focus um, you can see that the tipping is wearing sorry the coating is wearing off a little bit on the tipping where it touches the paper if you compare it to the other side and when that happens you tend to get a smoother writing experience by no means do I find this fine nib scratchy uh, it's not at all unpleasant it's just not a buttery smooth experience if that is what you absolutely love in pens of course it is also the fine if you'd get a medium or a broad nib uh, you might be in for a, a somewhat smoother experience um, and that's pretty much it it's a nice nicely tuned nib I found not too dry not too wet it's it's properly tuned or adjusted and as I said, it is a, a fairly stiff nib um, with a bit of care. You could squeeze out a little bit of line variation, but again, you have to be very careful. It's not a flex nib. So don't treat it as such. Uh, as to reverse writing, definitely scratchier, uh, but <clears throat> it is possible at the very least, I would say for a couple of words. So there we have it. Let's see what I like and what I don't like about this pen. Sorry, I didn't zoom out for enough. <laughs> Likes and dislikes. Okay, speaking of this uh, Enso Japanese Ebonite fountain pen. Sorry for me if I'm looking down. It's just because I have my notes here. Uh, there are a couple of things I really like about it. It looks good in my mind. Uh, sorry, I'm just looking at the mic. Yeah, it's still there. Um, it looks good. I think it's a nice, uh, nice looking pen. Um, it's comfortable. It, it writes well. I found it a pleasant writer. I, it, it looked to me like the kind of pen I would like to post simply because of the very light nature of the pen. But as I said, I, I, I'm not sure about posting this pen really because of cracks, because of all sorts of things, because of simple wobbliness. Um, Having said that, cool looking pen, nice writer, uh, nothing wrong with it. Things I don't like so much, the price uh, could be considered a bit high, $79, especially for that pocket model, which is really a small pen with a steel nib, and then 80 bucks is, is not nothing. On the other hand, these are typically limited runs, uh, and that's pretty much it. Um, the pen is very light, and if you are in the market for a very light pen, uh, I, I have viewers uh, in all kinds of uh, uh, with all kinds of different interests, etc. And I know that some people, because I do get these requests sometimes, of people who have specific issues with their hands or something who look for really light pens, this is an excellent option because you will not find many pens lighter than this. I think maybe in the Miki Falcon in resin uh, would be about that level. It's super super light. You barely feel you're holding anything. To other people, that might be obnoxious. Some people like something that is heavier, uh, that, that puts more weight in the scale, literally. Um, but, but yeah, that's a very personal matter. Having said that, I think it's cool. The fact that you can even eyedropper it, that adds additional functionality. It's cool. It's, it's a nice pen. It's well designed. I'm yet to see an Enso that I think is terrible. It's a well-made pen. Very simple, very elegant. I like it. And uh, that's pretty much all there's to it. So I hope this was useful. A very kind thank you to Enso for sending me this. And um, I'll gladly see you later. Bye-bye.